Hello. Welcome to the future. We're here already, aren't we? We tried to be cyberpunk. We tried to free software. But the idealism of the early web has failed us, right? However, is it possible that we need to be far more cyberpunk than we've been? I keep seeing these articles decrying the modern web, petitioning the online corporations to fix it, pointing out that Google searches don't produce nearly the creative and unusual results that they used to, but instead clickbait and bland advertising, requesting new digital tools to manage our information flow using machine learning and algorithms to produce different streams, showing us interesting, relevant content, and perhaps automating conversion to different formats. Wonderful ideas, wonderful. Questions about the sad state of personal data and infrastructure. The author cries out, why can't I search over all of my personal chat history with a friend? Why can't I have incremental search over my tweets? Why can't I search across watch YouTube videos? And on and on, as if even one of these questions would be read and built out. The New York Times even wrote an article, so the internet didn't turn out the way we had hoped. And paywall pop-ups that are produced, somehow they even disabled reader mode on this article. Let me ask you, has the government ever had trouble managing their inbound information? We know that they have access to U.S. corporation servers, but I can't help but feel that their approach is completely different from ours. Uh, but the key is, you've got this network of sensors around the world, and then I, sitting at the NSA in Hawaii, come in in the morning, I type in my search. I look for, let's say I, I want to read John Key's email. I enter his email address, and it sends that search to every one of these sensor networks around the world, and they search their local database of metadata and content. The content of all communications that pass through these sites is held for about three to five days, depending on the storage, and it's constantly, getting, uh, constantly going back further and further in time. A local database. This makes me think much of Brady Cat, where I'm monitoring people on their networks, their chosen networks, be it Tumblr or their blogs or Twitter, wherever it is. And this is kept in my local database for my own purposes of querying and storage. As we gain more capability. So I can see everything. I can see what book you looked at at Amazon.com, you know, uh, last week. Um, I can see who you talked to. I can see who your friends on Facebook are. Uh, I can see the text messages you, you sent. I can read the emails you wrote. Uh, and I can set up things that are called fingerprints that allow me to track where you've been on the web, who you're talking to, even if you're using sort of anonymizing technology and so forth. In the current relationship, government and corporate power surveil us. We are the subjects whose job it is to simply feed the surveillance network. with input. Our relationship with each other is already one of cyber warfare. I don't know how to change this. I, it seems inevitable that this would be the case. But what's to stop us from participating in the fun of cyber warfare? When we look at the network, we often appeal to its core in the hope that the benefits will spiral outward, that the features that we want and the civilization that we want will go from the inward out. But what if we were able to control just our node, at least, and its connections to that network? In this way, I find myself admiring PRISM for its ability to simply seek resources and build a database for that individual. I find myself admiring X key score for its ability to focus in on an individual and search that network and cross protocols 
even Stuxnet, with its resilience and aggressiveness. I, I don't want to write a government or, you know, a worm to do the work, but should Twitter or Instagram block my access to a user's data, I'd hope that I could figure out ways to route around it and to attempt to reach further with these connections. I don't think there's necessarily no point to petitioning the court. It's made of people after all. But this is where we are, is at the node level. And I mean, it doesn't matter anyway. These corporations are driven not by the needs of the individuals. Zuckerberg doesn't go out looking for comments and, and <laughs> essays on blogs for ideas. He sees himself as the arrogant captain at the head of that network. Steve Jobs set up this archetype of the harbinger of the future. He saw himself as seeing what we couldn't see, doing what we can't do. Well, let him have it. If this is where we are anyway, well, we can certainly yell and riot. But when we tell the network we need the network to be better, what it hears is this. It's not action. It's falling into submission. Sure, it's a critical, unsatisfied submission. But we abdicate to the network. If we are able to control our node and others are able to control their nodes, we gain the ability to subvert that network and to connect to others so that there's no need to build a new network. That may certainly come up in the future, but this can be a way of leveraging that current network. I'm suggesting that the story of cyberpunk is being played out very well in the case of the corpse. But it is the hackers and the runners who have failed in their job as citizens.